Good afternoon to you. This is your good friend, Pastor Ronnie Smith from Restoration Ministries, thanking you for joining us uh, for our broadcast today. Whether you're watching on the internet at t1073.com or on our Facebook Live or on T107, uh, we appreciate uh, David Dean giving us the opportunity. He's the station manager there at T107 for allowing us to share God's love on this great radio station. Just want to tell you a little bit about our church. We're a spirit-led, non-denominational church, and we're located at 420 Lilly School Road in Lilly, Kentucky. We're in the old Lilly School, and we just appreciate you being with us today. For more information, you can uh, check us out on the web at restorationministries.us. What we want to do today is just worship the Lord and maybe uh, give some encouraging words that would try to help you make it through this hour and time of need when no matter where you are and what you're doing, we're just glad that you could sit back and join us for a few minutes today. We're going to go ahead and join one of our services already in progress.
Lord, you found me, you healed me, you called me from the grave. You gave me real love, thank you, Jesus, you washed my sins away. And now I'm living like I'm forgiven, you came and set me free. your mercy did for me He gave beauty for my guilty stains And now I'm living day to day by His grace So excuse me if I can't contain my praise You found me, you healed me, you called me from the grave. You gave me real love, thank you, Jesus. You washed my sins away. Now I'm living, I don't forgive it. You came and set me free. Cause that's what your mercy did for me. Come on, Larry. think about what he will do, what he will go through for us. His love is just so reckless, it's so awesome and I look at the time that we're dealing in right now. Um, you know, Paul and Silas, I got thinking about them being in jail. Sometimes we feel like we're in jail right now, having been quarantined into to this little shelter we're in. And then I, I've been watching things on Facebook and just the different ways that we're, that God is reaching out, connecting to folks. And you know, Paul and Silas looking at them there in Acts 16, 25, and 34. They had just been imprisoned because they was out doing the will of the Father. And then because it, they was doing the will of the Father, they ended up casting some spirits out of a woman. And the people who was, was dealing with her, that she was servicing them by speaking things from, from the devil... They was like, we got to do something with them. We're going to put them people in pr prison. We're going to lock them up. So, you know, I, I wonder, what are we doing with this situation that we're in where we feel like we're maybe a little handcuffed? You know, we, we can't come to church together and, 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 and gather in here together and worship Him. And then I got thinking about Paul and Silas, how that they was put 
in a prison cell. Not only was they put in a prison cell, but they were put in an inner prison cell. They weren't just in a prison. They weren't just locked up or said, you need to have this in your, in your home or you got to uh, you know, have it not such a big congregation. I mean, listen, we're quarantined to less than 10 is what we're supposed to be. But then I think about that jailer that if they wouldn't have been about the father's business right in the middle of the inner prison, that if they weren't about the father's business, there's a jailer that wouldn't have been saved. So, uh, so their world, that they were so busy just living and doing the will of God. And then Paul and Silas, when they could have got down and said, you know what? This world, it's falling apart. But what did they do? They didn't say, Lord, we're done with you. But right there in the midnight hour, right here in Acts 16, it says, and at the midnight, Paul and Silas, while they was in prison, not just in prison, they was in the inner prison. It says, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake. How many knows that sometimes we need God to move? We need a great earthquake. You listen, I've got lost children. There's lost people in this world that some way that you're going to be able to reach them that if we was within these four walls, we would have never reached them. But I'm serving a God that, listen, no matter what comes my way, I'm going to serve him no matter what's going on. No matter what prison I feel that I'm in, I'm going to serve him. Because, listen, Long about the midnight hour when I could have been down on myself, God said, hold on. You just keep preaching. You just keep doing what I've called you to do. And right in the middle of your storm, I'm going to lead someone else. I'll go get, I'll leave the 99 and I'll put you where no one else can touch you. No one else can hear or see you. But listen, there is a little prison guard that could be my boy or my girl working in that prison. It could be my boy or my daughter, your daughter, your son, or your parents. That could be that guard. And you thought, I don't know how anybody's going to ever reach them. But because there was two men that was about the father's business. Long about the midnight hour, they was all about him. And then the earth came. The earthquake came and shook the jail. The door swung open. And then that jailer, not only was he... Not where he needed to be with the Lord. He was getting ready to kill himself. So our youth may be thinking, I can't take no more. Just remember, that you might feel like you're in prison, but you praise him anyway. Because there's someone, somewhere, is going to be watching what you're doing. And that jailer, they hollered out and they said, Hold it! Put your sword down. They led him to the Lord right there in the inner prison. So I don't know what your deal is today. I don't know what you're facing. But I know no matter what comes, that you just give him glory and honor no matter where you're at. Whether you're in prison, whether you're in your home, you're in your bedroom, and you're in your car. You just give it all to him. And he can shake an earthquake all around your world and just change it for his good and his glory. Amen. Thank God for Paul and Silas. Let's, let's make sure that we're trying to be like them, no matter if we're in prison or whatever, because there's a jailer that needs the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe. Yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts. We need a move. 
bodies are still being raised and giants are still being slain God we believe it yes we can see that wonders are still what you do we are here for you come and do what you So glad to have you with us today. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the sixth chapter of Galatians. I want to share with you this uh, day the story of restoration. How did restoration ministries come to be? You realize that uh, our church is, is four years old. We're still a baby. We'll celebrate our fourth anniversary on July the 10th. July 10th was my best buddy in the world, Bill Spencer's birthday. And that's when we launched Restoration Ministries almost four years ago. And, of course, Brother Bill has gone on to be with the Lord, but he was a vital part of who we are. We started in our home, and I had been pastoring another church in the community, beautiful building, beautiful facility. We had money in the bank, and I was on salary there. had a great group of people. I loved them. They loved me. But God began to burn and outreach in my heart, the kind of a different philosophy uh, maybe than most churches. And I really felt that I took that church as far as I could and loved them. And, you know, when I, when I left them, uh, they didn't want me to go. They were upset that I left them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's as a pastor, you know, my parents have been in the ministry over 60 years. And, you know, sometimes people shout when they know that you're, that you're going out of town, that you're leaving. But the folks were actually, they didn't really want us to go, but we felt like God was doing a shift in our life. And we just began to pray and seek the Lord and just kind of called together and say, hey, if you want to come, we're having a Bible study at our house. And Mark and Kelly Barnes were vital parts of the, of the birth of restoration, along with some other folks, uh, Terry and 
uh, Terry Dozier and his family, Terry and Amanda. And we met together and we began to think about what we felt like a church should be. And Galatians chapter 6 is the basis of who we are. It says this, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in a trespass, ye who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest thou also be tempted. And verse number two is a very popular verse that you know very well. It said, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. But we, even, even the first uh, two or three years of our church, our website was galatians6.org. And we, we kind of got a little fancy now. We're restorationministries.us. And Brother Ronnie Bright's done this great job. And they have this fancy website now and all that. And, but Galatians 6, that's who we are. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye who are spiritual, restore him. I want to ask you the question today, when somebody messes up in life, whose responsibility is it to help put them back together under the unction of the Lord? You see, unfortunately, in a lot of places, in a lot of churches, in a lot of things, when somebody messes up, people want to pick up the stones just like they did when they brought the woman caught in the act of adultery to Jesus. And they want to throw stones at people or... You know, it just seems like the juicier the gossip, the more that people love to hear about it. And I'll be honest, in being in the ministry all of my life and being around a lot of people, some of the meanest people that I've ever met in my life were not people in the world. They were people in the church. And to watch them turn on their own and rip them to shreds and, and, and talk about them and all these different things, man. We've seen it time and time again. And I, I could think about circumstances in my life, times when I found out who my real friends were, when, when I was left for, for dead on the side of the road, when, when I didn't always make the right decisions, when I found myself losing everything that I owned, losing literally everything, everything in my life was crushed. And you know, there were people that were supposedly my friends. There were pastors that were my friends that never called me one time. That never reached out to me one time. That never made an effort to ever try to encourage or restore me. And I had to pick up the pieces together and find out exactly what to do on my own. And we decided as we met together that we wanted to be a church that helped get people together. Now listen, we love people getting saved. We had 61 people get saved in Restoration Ministries in 2019. And most of them, a majority, 95% of them, are members of our church today. To God be the glory. We baptized over 60 in water. We've already had 13 people get saved in 2020 and have baptized those 13 people in water. So it's not that we don't love people getting saved because that's the ultimate thing is to see someone find salvation. But very rarely in this part of the country are we ever going to find somebody who doesn't know who Jesus is, who wasn't raised in church or whose grandma didn't take him to church, who, who maybe went and were hurt by the church or maybe they just messed up. Maybe they just made some bad decisions and they found themselves on the outside looking in. And we felt like according to the word of God that it was our mandate. As Galatians chapter 6 says, Brethren, if someone is overtaken in a fault, ye which are spirit, spiritual, who is that? That's the church. Should restore them. Not only restore them, but restore them in the spirit of meekness. We live in a world and that don't want to be generous, don't want to be meek, or don't want to be gentle in what they do. But we decided, you know, hey, we're going to get together and we're going to have a Bible study. We began to meet on Valentine's Day. It was Leanne and I, it was our anniversary. It was the first little house meeting we had. And man, we had people show up by the scores. There were times around Easter time, we had 87 people people in our home 
Can you imagine how Leanna felt? I mean, we had no parking. I mean, people were walking down from the end of the road. They were everywhere. But we literally had 87 people, and some of you listening today were there in that meeting. But I didn't know exactly what God wanted and where he wanted us to be. And there were people, you need to do this and you need to do that. But how many of you know sometimes you have to wait upon the Lord? And that 87 dwindled down to just a handful, dwindled down to two or three families. And I remember a night, we had a Wednesday service. I'll tell you who was there. My wife was there. My kids were there. Mark and Kelly Barnes was there. And Greg and Robin Disney. And that was it. That was the only people that were there. And I had told Leanna, coming out of that Sunday, I said, honey, maybe we've made a mistake. Maybe... Maybe we're just dreaming these things and there's just not really a place for us to be. And we got together and we had prayer meeting. We sang and we worshiped God and we prayed for our community. And Greg and Robin went on home and Mark and Kelly just said, can we talk to you for a few minutes? And they sat there in our living room of our home and they encouraged us and they loved on us and they said, we're with you. We believe in what you're doing. Don't give up. Don't give up on the chance. And the very next Sunday, my buddy Eli Emery and his family showed up in my home. And James Paul and his family. And now they are ministers in our church, leading our children's ministry, leading our group, and being a part of what God's done. We had about 35 people that first Sunday we met in July in, in, uh, almost four years ago in Woodbine. We rented that little building in Woodbine. And we were tickled to death to see what God was doing. We began to grow and begin to blossom and people were saved as we kept on reaching out. And God blessed so much in the two years that we were there. And make a long story short, last December, it's been over a year now, we've been here 16 months in Lily. That's so hard to believe we've been here that long. But 16 months ago, the Lord worked it out. Uh, through a brother, Brother Charles Parrish, to give us the opportunity that we could have this facility and work for the Lord. And we can see literally the hundreds of people that have been saved and even that many that have been restored to God and the feeding ministry. And I'm not, I don't want to brag. I'm not trying to brag about these things, but, but it's, it's an opportunity that we've had. And I remember in those very first meetings, we said, we want to feed our community. Here's what James said at the very end of the first chapter of the book of James. It said, pure, undefiled religion is this, that you remember the orphans and the widows. He said, if you want to know what religion is, take care of the people that don't have anyone to take care of them. I remember being in a prayer meeting just a few years ago and as the Holy Spirit began to deal with me and the Lord began to speak to my heart and my mind, I began to pray this prayer. Lord, send me people that no one else wants. Send me people that are so sick of church and so sick of religion and so sick of denomination that they've literally had all that they could stand and let them come in here that we could love on them and that we could restore them in gentleness, as Galatians chapter 6 said, that we could show them that there's a better way. We could show them that God is not only a God of second chances, but he's a God of third, fourth, fifth, however many chances that he means. And you know, if you come to restoration on any given Sunday now, you'll sit amongst people that have been in prison. You'll sit amongst people that have been uh, freed, and conquered the sins of their life and even addiction. Tony and Rita Kaiser do a wonderful job leading the restoration, conquering addiction ministry. And we've seen seven of their people baptized that they meet out in a facility uh, on our property. That they don't even come to the normal services, but the Holy Spirit is moving. I've seen revival in our children's church. We've, revi- uh, we've seen our kids. We've seen our young people take over them. They're not the church of tomorrow. They're the church of today as they work so hard for the Lord and trying to serve him. I see the ministry of our feeding program. And even as this being aired, we fed over 1,000 meals today to our community as volunteers gathered here in our facility. 
I see our daycare and our preschool finally getting to where it can roll and Restoration Christian Academy. I see our jail ministry and our visitation ministry going to the nursing homes. And, and every week on Wednesday, Sister Kim Young and her group, they begin to hand out meals for free and serve it here in the church. We have prayer meeting here at least five times a week. And man, we've seen it and we believe that the reason revival is taking place at restoration is because we've been a church that has fallen on our knees before God. And you see, our goal is to change the world. And in order to change the world, we have to do that one family at a time. You'll sit amongst people that have been incarcerated. We have murderers in our church. We have adulterers in our church. Robbers, liars, thieves, fornicators. People that had fallen hard, but they came to restoration and God restored their life. I remember a man who's a member of our church now who was incarcerated for over 20 years for murder. And I remember having a conversation. He said, how could God ever love me when I took someone's life? And my response to him was, not only did he love you, he sent his son to die for you, that you could have eternal life. And let me tell you something wonderful about grace. It's not what we deserve. Because if we had what we deserved, we would have everyone been in hell a long time ago. But grace is the unmerited righteousness and mercy of God that is displayed to us even when we don't deserve it. I don't know the condition that you may be in in your heart tonight or in your life. You may be in a position that you can wake up in the morning and you say, God, how in the world did I get here? How in the world have I got from here to there? How could I have once been singing in the choir, been a deacon in a church? How could I have once been preaching the gospel and I find myself in a bed to someone I'm not married to? Well, I want to tell you something today. That whatever mess you're in, God loves you. And I want to see you restored back to fellowship. Some of you, the only reason you're alive today is the prayer of your grandmother. The prayer of your parents. The prayer of those people in your life that held you up. Maybe it was a spouse. Maybe it was a brother or a sister or an aunt and uncle. That someone stood in the gap for you. And if it weren't for the mercies of God, you'd have died of that heart attack. You would have died of that overdose. You would have died in that car, or, uh, car wreck. But because of the grace and mercy and prayers that somebody prayed for you, they brought you to the place you are right now. And it's no accident you're looking at me and I'm looking at you and we're meeting here through social media. We're saying, hey, brethren, if you've been overtaken in a fault, let us help restore you back to a relationship with God. And as long as there's breath in my body and as long as there's one person that needs God, the mission must go on. I read a long time ago in a book by Dr. David Jeremiah, the story of the man that wanted to change the world. And he said it like this. I realized in order to change the world, I had to change myself. And once I changed myself, I could change my family. And once I impacted my family, I could impact my community. And once I impacted my community, I could impact my state. And once I impacted my state, then I could impact my country. And once I impacted my country, I then could impact the world. In order to change the world, in order to change the situation that you may be going through in your life, you have to find yourself coming to a point in your life where you're ready to make a decision. I don't care where you've been only where you're going. I don't care the wrongs that you've done. All I know is there is a faithful and a just God who is willing and able to forgive you of your sin. You say, preacher, you don't know what I've done. There's no way God could forgive me. Yes, he can. If there's breath in your body, there's purpose. And God has a destiny for you and there's an opportunity that you have you can change the world. And my prayer is that the Holy Spirit would begin to deal with your heart 
and deal with your mind and deal with your spirit and that conviction would rest upon you and that you would remember the way that it used to be and that there would be a desire in you to get back to the ways of old. And if there's ever any way that Restoration Ministries can be a help to you, we want to be here for you. And the best thing that I know to do for you tonight is to pray for you right where you are. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity and for every listener that is listening to this program. I pray, dear God, that somehow we could be a tool in the hands of the potter that could help restore a lost and dying world. And Lord, we just want to give hope. We just want people to be encouraged in their time and hour of need. And you see my brother and you see my sister that's sitting there right now listening to this prayer. Lord, would you bring back to their memory all the good things that you did for them. Lord, would you remind them of the promises and prophecies and the things that have been called over their life. And Lord, would you give them the strength right now to pray this prayer. Father, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I've made mistakes. Bring me back into fellowship with you. Forgive me of my sins. Wipe them away as far as the east is from the west. And give me the strength to be the man or the woman that you've had me to be in Jesus' name. Just want to tell you that I love you tonight. If there's anything I can do for you, check us out on the web. Do whatever you can. Reach out to us. Come and see us. We're located at 420 Lily School Road in Lily. Or check us out on the internet at restorationministries.us. I'm going to be praying for you, and I hope to see you soon. God bless you. You've been listening to the program of Restoration Ministries, and this is Pastor Ronnie Smith thanking you for joining us today. I hope something has been said or sung that's been an encouragement to you and your family. We're only here for one reason, and that's to uplift the name of God. And it's such a troublesome time that we're all going through right now, and we just appreciate you being with us here on T107 and on the Internet and Facebook Live. Restoration Ministries is a spirit-led, non-denominational church located at 420 Lily School Road in Lily, Kentucky, 40740. That's 420 Lily School Road, Lily, Kentucky, 40740. We are located right in the middle of London and Corbin on, uh, on Old Lily School Road, which is the, that's where we are. We are in the Old Lily School. God has blessed us tremendously. We have a wonderful feeding program where we're able to feed the community. And if you or someone you love are in need, uh, feel free to reach out to us. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Our, our website is restorationministries.us. And we appreciate David Dean and T107 for allowing us to be with you today. And we just pray that God would bless you richly and that you'll have a wonderful day.